Hello, what any five gamers? Today we have a Q and A to review today. Yesterday I made a community post asking you to ask me some questions, and we got some pretty interesting questions. So I want to uh, go ahead and answer them today. But for our first question, uh, we have Z's. If you and Santi went against each other for who was the <sighs> most skibbityest, who would win? Um. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be skibbity. Uh, so if you look at the reply, it actually does say uh, Santi saying me, of course. So yeah, Santi, because um, I wouldn't even begin to compete. Next question here from Future Destiny. My first question to you is, what exactly about Melly spoke uh, out to you that would make her become your favorite character in main? Uh, so for Melly, she wasn't my first main, right? I think I mentioned before that I started off with Doc when I first started playing the game, and then I went to Prisoner, Coordinator, and I played around with a few other characters. Uh, but I noticed Melly was really, really cool looking when I started watching tournaments. Uh, and then I started picking up Melly, and I was like, okay, this character's really fun. I started reading about her lore. I loved her design. I think she has the best survivor design in the game. Uh, and I, I kind of, I kind of just like fell in love with her character and her gameplay and everything about her. She's just such a cool character. Uh, my other question is, what personally drives you to succeed and push yourself to be both better at IDV and as a content creator? Uh, this is a great question. Um, <laughs> well, I, I play IDV because I think it's really, really fun, right? I, I've almost been playing a year now. Actually, I think in about a week, uh, it'll be one year since playing, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if I'll do anything special for that. And then I'll probably have like a year special when this channel actually started up sometime in September, I believe it was. Uh, that'll be pretty fun. But as for wanting to get better at IDV, uh, I just I just really like playing the game and I want to try and master the characters. I think it's just really fun, the high level gameplay. It's super intense and fun. And although I might like complain a lot, uh, about like certain like abilities and whatnot. I still have a great time while doing it. It's more just I get frustrated a lot when uh, I don't perform as well as I wish I did because I do practice and, and I do research and a lot of times I just fail and that never really feels good. And I do get a lot of uh, comments about how bad I am at the game and uh, a lot of my biggest critics uh, always bring up the fact that I'm just trash at the game, which they're right. I don't think I'm very good at this game. Um, but it, it, it doesn't feel good uh, to hear that all the time. Just everybody say, oh, Z's that, you mean that guy who sucks at the game? You mean that guy who can't even kite 30 seconds? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel good. And part of me wants to prove those people wrong. But uh, at the moment, they're right. But I just got to keep practicing, right? But there are lots of other reasons why I want to get better. A lot of it is just because I want to get better at the characters I enjoy playing. And I just enjoy the game from a fundamental level, both casually and competitively. So that's one of the biggest reasons. And then as for being a content creator, I feel like it's kind of the, uh, similar where it's just, I enjoy the game a lot. Uh, and I've actually grown to be one of the uh, bigger content creators uh, for Identity 5. And that's uh, fun, but scary at the same time. I really don't feel like I'm one of the bigger creators. I still feel like it's all so new. Even though I'm about a year old now, I, I still feel like I'm pretty new uh, to this community. And I, uh, I really want to make a change because I always hear these things about NAEU, especially uh, how they like were in darker times in the past, how there were a lot of uh, more toxic players. Um, and as I've been playing, a lot of those uh, things have come to light. Obviously, I think it was worse in the past, especially I think like uh, in that Be For You interview I made or with RVL now, uh, Shmini was mentioning that NAEU's behavior was so bad in Koa 3, they weren't even invited. Uh, so I will... <sighs> This might sound like a bit pretentious, but I really want to change NAU for the better. And I know a lot of people don't like uh, me as a creator. Uh, I actually have a lot of critics, not so much on YouTube, but I've uh, done some ego surfing here and there. And I, I do have a lot of uh, people who don't like my content and that's fine, right? That's that's fine. Um, it hurts seeing some of those comments because uh, they, they can be really mean spirited, but uh, it doesn't, really matter too much if they hate me. I just hope they don't hate what I'm doing, right? Because uh, I want to make NAU a better place. I, I want um, to encourage positivity and I want to encourage other people to do the same. Sort of inspire others to make the server a better place. You could say I was very inspired by uh, b for you slash RVL. Um, they're so passionate about making this server a better place and I was really inspired by them so I really want to do my best to make this server a better place as well. Uh, so whatever ways I can do that, I want to do. 
and I want to, I guess, unite a lot of the uh, other creators as well, especially with my upcoming uh, charity streams that I'm going to be working on. I really want to unite a lot of the content creators uh, together to keep making NAEU a better place. So I really, I really hope that that's something I can do. Uh, push, push harder for a uh, better server uh, just experience, especially for newer players as well. Now, obviously, I don't know how much control I have over something like that. Perhaps I don't make any impact at all. I really don't know. It's more just like a nice thing uh, that I have ideas for. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, I do have a lot of other ideas uh, when it comes to content creation for this channel. Uh, so I hope you'll stay tuned and look forward to them. Next, we have a question from Lev Spider. They have two questions. They say, if you weren't doing YouTube as a full-time job, what would you be doing instead? That's a great question. Uh, well, I went to college, community college, unfortunately. I didn't get accepted to any prestigious colleges. Uh, but I went to community college for two years uh, for computer science, and I was planning on transferring to a more prestigious college after two years. Um, but I had some personal issues going around during that time. Um, had uh, had just, just personal stuff, I guess I'll say. I won't go into it. Uh, but I decided to drop out from college and pursue doing YouTube, which I had been working on as a hobby for during the two years I was uh, doing it. And um, I've always wanted to be a YouTuber ever since I was young. Maybe not for my main job. I think I want to do it more as like a hobby or have like two jobs. I'm a person who wants to do a lot with their life, wants to do uh, a lot with their passions. And I feel like I'm throwing all my eggs into one basket with YouTube. Uh, so there could be a time when I maybe step down a little bit more in the future. But right now, I'm having so much fun doing it. I'm meeting a lot of new friends and people and making connections and... I've just been having a really good time on YouTube. But as for what I'd be doing instead, um, I have so many other passions. When I was a Boy Scout, uh, it, it, it opened my eyes to so many different things. And I could see myself doing anything. Honestly, I really could. I feel like it would still be in the creative field. Like, I would love to write. I would love to design a game. I would love to be an animator. Uh, I would love to cook. <laughs> there's, there's so many things. I, I could go on and on and on. Uh, their second question is, if IDV didn't exist, what other game would you base your channel on? I mean, that's a good question. It'd probably be Fire Emblem because I actually do have another channel that's dedicated to Fire Emblem. Now, I have been behind on that channel, but I'm starting to catch up on uh, some of the content from Fire Emblem Heroes. But I actually have like a lot of other channels and I haven't been working on them as much, um, especially because the move uh, was, happened and that took up a whole lot of my time. I'm hoping in a couple weeks, once I start catching up with the IDV and Faye content, uh, that I'll start be able to work on those other channels as well. There's some big projects coming on Zizov G2. Uh, and three, I want to do a lot more stuff with. It's it's more just managing the time and finding the time to do them. Um, but I would say Fire Emblem, if we're just talking about a specific game. Next up, we have some questions from Ilios. A few of these I did answer in a previous Q&A, so I won't answer all of them. But their first question is, what are your top 10 or five IDV characters? Uh, well, obviously, I think I'm just gonna go for five to keep things simple. Uh, my favorite character is Melly. Uh, that's that's easy. Uh, everybody knows that one. Branded the entire channel around her. My second favorite character is Composer. I really, really like Composer. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a bit boy biased toward a lot of the Ashes of Memory characters. I just think they're all so cool. It's just a bit of a coincidence they all line up together. Uh, I, I really love the Ashes of Memory characters. Uh, my third favorite character is... That's tough. It's probably... It's probably... I, I don't know if I have a third, but I, I'd say like three, four, and five. Maybe not in that order. It's going to be Nightwatch, Antiquarian and uh, journalist, probably, I would say. Or no, novelist. Oh, that's tough. I guess the top six would be journalist and novelist. Right? Yeah, so anti Nightwatch, journalist, uh, and novelist are like three through six. But I know Melly and Composer are my top two right now. There's, a, there's quite a few other characters I like, but those are definitely some of my favorites. And the other question that I'm gonna go over is, any tips on how to improve? I know you mentioned that before watching tournaments has helped, but what other tips do you have? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I'm still trying to learn this one myself because, again, I'm not good at the game. I'm still trying to improve myself. But I think what really helps is the issue with watching tournaments. If you're trying to get better at Survivor, uh, it's a little hard to watch from the Survivor's perspective since they always show the Hunter perspective, right? Watching from tournaments is a good way to get game sense uh, and get, like, ideas of what to do. Uh, and like also Hunter, it's great for Hunter. But if you're trying to look at Survivor, it's a little trickier. Um, I would recommend going on to Spectate the Pros, watching the pros do certain things. Uh, I wish on Spectate the Pros, there'd be an option to pause the match. I really wish there would be. I think what's really good is to ask yourself questions while reviewing a match and be like, what is this person doing after this happens, right? Let's say that you're approaching a pallet, right? And you're playing as a Survivor. 
Um, are you going to drop the pallet? Are you going to run past the pallet? Are you going to hug the pallet? Or are you going to not even use the pallet, do something else, use an ability, whatever? Um, there's so many little factors to consider. And watching other players, especially at the top level, uh, it can be really good. You can like pause and be like, okay, I would do this in this scenario and then see what the person does and see if your idea would have worked better or if some other idea worked better. I, I think just that is a good thing. Also just reviewing your gameplay um, is really, really good. I highly recommend this to everybody. I know it's not fun, but whenever you get destroyed, I'm talking just like whenever you get clipped, save that match and rewatch it. And then look back at what happened and say, what could I have done differently? Now, a lot of the times, I don't know. Sometimes you have to ask somebody else. For example, when I'm kiting Geisha, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I, I don't know how to kite that hunter. She, in my opinion, at the moment right now, she is the hardest hunter for me to kite in the game. And she generally feels like a hunter that has a blink every eight seconds. I don't know how to kite her. So whenever I need, whenever I ask people like, hey, how do I kite Geisha? They're always like, oh, hug pallets, do this, tight kite, blah, blah. Never works for me, right? So I feel like I always have to look at specific examples uh, of what I should have done differently, right? It, it, does, it never feels good because you have to look at your mistakes in the face, but that's the best way to improve in my opinion, is to recognize the fact that you made a mistake, not blame your teammates like a lot of other people in this game do, and uh, try to look at that mistake, burn it into your memory, and then remember it for next time. Next up, we have some questions from Angelfish, and they say, uh, what is your favorite part in your IDV YouTube journey for their first question? Uh, I really like this question, that's a good one. I think there's three things that I really like. The first thing uh, is meeting new people. I I've met a lot of people through IDV, uh, a lot of fellow creators, a lot of really kind viewers. Um, I, I, I recognize a lot of the uh, regulars that comment on my channel. I do see your comments and they make my day, especially the ones that like come back day in and day out uh, for like most of the videos. Even just like here and there, I recognize a lot of the names in the uh, in the comments. Thank you so much for your comments, by the way, everybody. I know I don't respond to all of them since I do get quite a few, but I do see them and I do love them and they really do make my day. The, the feedback warms my heart, I guess I should say, because I really like it when, you know, people give me feedback on my videos. Even if it's just like a silly comment or uh, people say like, oh, I liked this part specifically. It helps me realize like what you guys want to see. Um, and I really like that. And another part that I really like is when there's something big that's happening in the game, right? Uh, like Koa, that was so fun, dude. It took up so much time, but oh man, live streaming that was so fun, man. It was so fun. It, it, it provided like some really good channel growth, but it also helped me, um, you know, reach out to other people, watch like the top level gameplay. You guys in the chat were like really, really excited to watch a lot of these matches and doing it alongside everybody was just so much fun. Um, and I, I'm excited for next year. I really am. Uh, but also like whenever new characters come out, that's super hype. I get to experience that with everybody. We all get to like watch the trailers, get hyped, play all, play the character the day it drops, uh, stuff like that. You know, it's really fun. It's really fun. It's it's the, the sense of community, I guess, is like, it's, it's so much fun. And then uh, finally, it's like whenever new skins come out for my favorite characters or new crossovers happen, that's also really hype. And they're very memorable when they do happen. Their second question is, you have separate channels, but you will you upload videos besides IDV on here, like Roblox again? Uh, well, I, I'm not crazy about Roblox. Uh, the only incentive I have to play Roblox is if like Santi invites me. I'm not gonna play Roblox on my own. I don't really find it to be super fun. Then again, I don't maybe it's because I don't really know what's out on there on Roblox. Um, but I'm not gonna upload a Roblox video. That would be more like a live stream. Uh, how I work on YouTube is I like keeping uh, for my channels. I like keeping my channels consistent with a single type of content. That's why um, I my avatar on Roblox is Chi Chi Yi because I felt like if I did like anything that wasn't ID5, it wouldn't be uh, at least IDV themed. So I want to keep things ID5 related on this channel. Um, on a different channel, I can branch out into different things. Um, but yeah, for at least like if it's Roblox, I want to keep things like ID5 related. At least like the, the jokes that I would make or references that I would make, it's all like IDV stuff, right? Cause that's, that's my community. I wouldn't want to reference things that like nobody would understand, right? If I started talking about like Fire Emblem for like three minutes, like people would just click off because like, they don't want to watch that, right? It's, it's a lot about just YouTube algorithm and what audiences want to see. That's why like channels have to stick to a specific niche on YouTube. That's why I have so many because I have too many niches that I'm interested in, uh-oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if your question is, will I upload anything else besides IDV on this channel? The answer is sort of, but mostly not really, no. It's gonna be mostly IDV on this channel. If you want other things, check out the other channels. That's all I can really say. Uh, their second question is cutest skin. 
Um, that's a great question. There's a lot of skins that I have to think about. Uh, oh boy. Cutest skin. Honestly, it might be... It might be that new Eggy Lucky Guy skin, honestly. That one is pretty cute. It's it's goofy as heck, but it's it's adorable, dude. It's just, it's stupid, but it's adorable. Oh, well, actually, a lot of the Axe Boy skins are really cute, too. Honestly, the Pumpkin Axe Boy skin is really cute. I do like that one. Oh, all the, all the Christmas skins. Oh, those are all adorable, too. There's a lot. I don't know if I can pick just one. Next up, we have a question from Lilyism, and they ask, do you have any hunter anxiety when ranking? I know everyone gets frustrated at hunter rank, but do you get nervous even just starting it up? Uh, not really. I mean, I guess hunter anxiety isn't really the word that I feel. I feel like I get more hunter frustrated, right? Because a lot of the time I feel like I'm doing well as hunter, and then I just like get destroyed in one match, and it's just like, dang, am I just bad? Or were the people I up against just bad? Uh, it's, it's weird. Um, but no, I don't really feel anxiety because I do want to improve. I think what I feel anxiety about is, um, <laughs> when I fail, it just, it's just more fuel for those people who hate me to be like, yo, this guy sucks. Look at that. I, I cut his Nightwatch for five ciphers. Like, sorry that my Nightwatch isn't actually good. My bad. Like, <laughs> just, even though I made it to Dragon and got a almost S-Batch Nightwatch, I don't feel like I'm actually good. I just like was able to play a lot that season, right? I don't feel like I actually earned a dragon. Like, my skill level is not dragon. My skill level is still that of a manticore for Hunter, I think. Uh, but we're working on it. The second question is, why did you choose Ithaca as one of your mains? Is there anything specific you like, whether it be lore or something else? Well, I didn't really pay too much attention to lore when I first started, but the reason I started playing Nightwatch a lot uh, was because of Kuga from Team Future. Uh, when I first started getting into IDV, Nightwatch was actually like probably one of the best hunters in the game because nobody really knew how to counterplay him. He was still somewhat new, uh, so he was like the hot new shiny toy, kind of like what Ivy is right now. A lot of people learn how to counterplay Ivy, but obviously she's still much better than Nightwatch. Uh, but Nightwatch was very solid, he was fast, and a lot of people didn't really know what to do against him. He was basically like beta opera singer, um, so people weren't like just ready for his speed. And Kuga was really really good at night watch right like he took advantage of that and he was getting 4ks on hospital um by the way on the hospital now best case scenario is like 1k for night watch <laughs> it's really hard but uh kuga kuga really inspired me to pick up night watch and um i just loved how fast play fa fast pace and aggressive night watch was i've always been somebody who admires a game that like where there's a lot of interaction and there's a lot of um I guess just like fast paced gameplay. That's why I like opera singer gameplay. I think opera singer gameplay is really fun, but I, I, I get kind of snooze fast when it's like a bomb bun because bomb bun's not as interesting trying, right? You, you do have some interesting bomb chains and whatnot that you can do, but it's not really that hype when it's like just throw bombs and then sit at the chair for like 60 seconds, wait for somebody to come at rescue. And then he just sits there. Like it's a lot of just waiting around as bomb bun for like half the game. Same with hunters like Anne and whatnot. I don't really find stunning hunters to be all that exciting because like there's not much interaction and counterplay. Whereas with Nightwatch, there's so much counterplay because he's weak to harassment, um, but he can also deal with it in certain ways too, right? It's not like he has nothing to work with, which is why I think he's just such a fascinating hunter. Um, even though he's like kind of, he's kind of brain dead. He, he's a little brain dead because you kind of just go wind spam, wind spam, wind spam, and then go speed, speed, speed. Um, but at the higher levels, you know, a lot of people know how to counterplay him, which is the case for all the hunters. But for him specifically, he's very simple. He's a bit of a one trick pony. Um, but that's not to say that you can't mind game people at all. I don't know. Uh, I, I just really like Ithaca. He has been the hunter I've grinded out the most. So I really know uh, what I'm doing with him. I just feel like I need to put in a lot more work to really shine with that character because I definitely am not S-Badge material yet. Next question is from Fampa. They ask, how do you think your content has changed the IDV community? Have you noticed any difference since you started posting? For example, more English IDV YouTubers, people being nicer, stronger community bonds, etc. Um, I'm gonna say sort of. I think what's interesting is that my thumbnail style, I believe has somewhat evolved uh, other creators' thumbnail styles. Like if you look at certain other creators, uh, before I became a creator of IDV, their thumbnails weren't as good. And I think I upped the game for the thumbnails for IDV. Um, now, I, I could totally be wrong, and it could just be the creators uh, just working on their own thumbnails as well. But I do feel like I did upgrade the thumbnail game for IDV a little bit. I do think... Um, I can't share it all, though, because I do think uh, Duco and Black Phoenix have amazing thumbnails as well. I think they have the best thumbnails uh, for IDV. 
So I, I would definitely praise those two as well. Their thumbnails are better than mine. I do think I have pretty good thumbnails in the IDV community, but I would say they're, those two creators have much better thumbnails than I. Um, I, I really love their thumbnails. I'm not gonna like steal their style, but I really do like their thumbnail style. So I really hope uh, their channels get more attention and whatnot. And I guess I have uh, helped out Zeus and Santi with their channels. I did help out Zeus with uh, thumbnail theory and about like what makes a good video on YouTube, just like some fundamentals and whatnot. I think Zeus is a really, really good creator. Um, I honestly think he deserves a lot more subscribers. I think Zeus is somebody I would, um, consider to have like untapped potential when it comes to create creating content because i feel like a lot of his content um is like reused from streams and whatnot which is completely fine right that's that's totally fine but i feel like with zeus's experience at the game and his personality he could be, create some uh really really good content on this platform which he already does obviously but i just like saying like he could definitely like evolve more i feel like he has untapped potential that's also the case for santi i did help out santi with uh some thumbnails i taught him how to do like thumbnail fundamentals and whatnot which definitely helped uh him out i think a little bit but uh something that's interesting about santi now don't don't tell him don't tell him i said this i mean he can watch the video but don't tell him nobody nobody share this clip with santi but i genuinely think Santi has the potential to be the top creator of identity five for English audiences uh, because Santi is not only extremely good at this game, which attracts a lot of the competitive type players, but he also has that engaging, energetic and silly personality that a lot of people want to see. Um, he's not super serious about his mistakes. Like for me, I complain a lot and I like uh, get upset when I lose, but Santi, he can laugh that off, right? He always has a smile. And I think Santi, um, if he keeps up like the content grind, I really do think he could be like the biggest channel for IDV. I do, I do think he might need to like change up his content a little bit if he wants that to happen. Uh, maybe do like a little bit more casual things to appeal to more casual audiences. Maybe do like more reviewing gameplay or not, or like connect to his audience more, not just post gameplay. But his gameplay is obviously like very, very good. But I think Santi is one of uh, the most engaging content creators. And I really mean it when I say I think he can be the top creator for IDV. But uh, getting back to what my impact has done, uh, it's hard to say, because I feel like my community, at least here on YouTube, is kind. But I do notice that there are just a lot of toxicity and hateful comments elsewhere. And I can't impact the entire server, right? I'm just a YouTube channel. There's only so much that I can do. And I felt like if I were to quit now, nothing would really change. Um, I don't feel like I've done anything super impactful yet, but I hope to do so before I retire from IDV, I guess. I don't know. That's not anytime soon, but I do hope to make a more serious impact, hopefully in the future. Next we have is a question from Ghost Skullzo. They ask, when did you find your love slash passion for uploading videos? Uh, that's a great question. That would be back all the way in elementary school. Uh, I mean, I've been a bit of a creative nut for a long time. Not so much to the sense of like excelling at it, but I've enjoyed it, right? I don't think I'm particularly good at anything in life. I know that sounds depressing, but I, I generally am not. Like I don't excel at anything. I'm pretty average across the board, but I'm interested a lot in creative things, right? And ever since I was younger, I knew I wanted to make videos. I actually started a YouTube channel with a friend back in fourth grade where we filmed little plushy videos with like Nintendo characters like Mario, Kirby, Zelda, Link, all that good stuff. Um, Obviously that channel was deleted and I think we only uploaded like three videos, but uh, I made a lot of videos when I was younger with my sisters. Um, I, just, I made a ton of videos. I made little animations in Flipnote Studio 3DS that weren't good at all. Um, you can find a lot of those on my third channel, I think. They're still up, uh, uploaded for preservation's sake and whatnot. But yeah, I, ever since I was young, I loved uploading videos. Now, maybe not so much uploading videos, but making videos uh, and I watched a lot of YouTube when I was younger. I grew up watching YouTube, so it was just like a site for creators to share their videos. And I never really uh, made a channel until 2018, which it's it's a bit of a funny story, actually. I'm not going to get too much into it, but uh, when I was in high school, I actually wanted to create a YouTuber or uh, YouTube channel with my friend. And I forget what we were going to call it, but it was going to be a group channel. It was like me and him, and we were going to like do videos and Let's Plays uh, of like gaming content, right? Mostly Nintendo stuff. And uh, we we had this plan for, I wanna say like three years. And I was um, kind of the doofus, I guess you could say between the friends. He, he was a very talented person, right? He, he was very outgoing. We were both like in Boy Scouts, but he was um, really good in school. He had did a lot of extracurriculars and he was really like preparing to get into a good college. He just didn't have the time. 
he didn't have the time. And I, I was, at the time I was pretty upset cause like he couldn't commit as hard. Cause I was somebody who, I mean, I had Boy Scouts, but I didn't have a ton of extracurriculars in school. Cause I played a lot of like video games when I got home or I just, I goofed off a lot cause I didn't really prepare for my future or anything. Cause I just kind of assumed that I would just become goaded. I was like, eh, well, whenever I, whenever I get older, I'll just become like a doctor or whatever. I'll just like work really hard or something. That's, that's the thing. I've, I kind of just winged life. I'm just like, eh, I'll just work really hard and I'll be fine. Which I mean, I have, I've worked really hard and I've, I'm currently fine right now. I mean, maybe not so much in the future. I don't really have a lot of savings or anything, but you know, uh, I'll just keep working really hard, bro. I'll just, it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, we wanted to create this duo channel and uh, I did, I had like a bunch of uh, like YouTube assets and whatnot, like a bunch of pre-recorded, we had like re-recorded a lot of stuff, but we needed like a lot more uh, stuff from his side of things. Cause we did like a lot of joint content, a lot of solo content, but he was supposed to have his own stuff too. And he even never really worked on his stuff. Uh, so because of that, my start of my YouTube career was kind of just put on hold. And then um, when I was really depressed in my senior year of high school, when I didn't get accepted into any colleges, where I had to watch all my friends go off to college and live their best lives. And I had to uh, sit in the graduation stand, listening to all the valedictorians be like, yo, we are the class of awesome. We are going to have bright futures and we are all smart and cool. And I'm sitting there like, ha 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 ha, that's funny. I didn't get accepted into college and I have no future. It was really cool. So uh, instead I decided to pursue my YouTube career, sort of. Uh, I didn't actually think uh, I was up to the task, but I had a friend actually who was really interested in making YouTube content and he's promised that he was going to upload every single Sunday and uh, he didn't. Here's a different friend than the other friend. Uh, and I was like, yo, where's these Sunday uploads, bro? Where, where are these things? And he just didn't upload and we kept bugging him about it. Uh, my friend group was bugging about it just like as a meme. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it to show you how easy it is. And so I started doing it like sort of out of spite, but like to tease my friend. And then I started making the videos, realized that, oh, I, I kind of like uh, making videos. I'm going to keep making more. So I kept making more, kept making more, uh, made a ton of videos, dude. A lot of which are deleted now, but um I guess that just kind of led me to where I was. I, I, I kind of just like got back into it because of uh, my friend. And then once I realized I wanted to just do this for a living, I kind of did it. And now here I am. Uh, sorry for the tangent there. Next up, we have a question from Homura Kisses. They ask, how do you feel all about the Z's devil things? I hope this doesn't sound weird. You guys are real people. Yeah, so Santi is an interesting specimen because he likes to... Uh, make funny jokes. And uh, I, don't, I don't think some people realize that they're jokes. Um, as for how comfortable I am with them, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but it's not like a huge deal. It's just kind of like, eh, whatever. It's just Santi being Santi. He's just trying to be a goofball. Uh, just, trying to, just trying to make things goofy or whatever. I don't know. But then some people like uh, take it so far to be like chipping and it's like, it's not really good to ship real people. That's that's all I can really say. Um, but no, Santa, Santa and I are buddies, and I'm fine with uh, the jokes that he makes. I mean, they're not they're not, my, not really my cup of tea. But nah, eh, it's it's Santa, bro. He's gonna find some other way to torture me. <laughs> but yeah, I would say um, I, I I think it's fine as long as it's like clearly very obviously a joke that is just at the expense of like haha i'm upset because he's being freaky devil or whatever um but no if, it, if it's like genuinely trying to like ship the creators together please do not do that uh because that is not healthy for the creators it can make things really awkward between them and that goes for just anybody as well you should never really ship real people uh so yeah do not do that but i know most people realize that they are just simply santi being Freaky devil or whatever the he whatever that whatever the heck he wants to call it some freak. It's, it's all just TikTok it's garbage it's, it's just it's TikTok has poisoned Santi's mind. I really don't know what to say other than that Next up we have some questions here from Telemund. Their first question is what made you stay like playing IDV? Uh, that's a good question. Obviously I did join because of the Danganronpa v3 crossover I think I've mentioned that several times before now uh, but it was the gameplay itself that I just found to be really, really fun. Because when I first started playing IDV, it was mainly just because of the Danganronpa stuff. I was like, oh, I want to play these Danganronpa characters, just run around as them. I think that'd be rather goofy. And then maybe I could just, like, play it here and there, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but then I realized, oh my gosh, this game is actually really, really, really fun. 
I think IDV, more than a lot of games now, just has that intensity for a lot of games, especially like when the matches are really, really close. Like the most interesting matches are not the ones that are one-sided, but the ones where the skill levels are just like constantly clashing against each other, where it's like, oh man, that feels good. Even if it's like low level gameplay, if they're like equal in skill, where they're just like both fighting at each other, trying to like, you know, one up the other person for Hunter and Survivor. It, it's great, dude. It, it, it's, it's so intense. It's so intense to watch, to play all of it like both factions are so much fun like it's it, it really is such a well-designed game from just like a joy or i guess like an intensity perspective i know a lot of people get frustrated playing dv myself included a lot of people always make jokes about how all oh, this game sucks and i'm miserable while playing it. it's not even fun i just rank because i rank and i need to get good but like that intensity is like what really really gets me about the game uh, they ask, what is your favorite thing about making videos in IDV content? I think I kind of answered this earlier, uh, but I'm really happy with uh, obviously just playing the game. It's really, really fun. The casual stuff in the game is really, really fun. And also just getting the feedback uh, from all the uh, videos. I love reading the comments. I read every single comment. Um, there are a lot of people who ask questions, by the way, in the comments. Uh, and I do respond to a good amount of them. However, I don't respond to questions that I've answered a lot of times. There are a lot of questions like, oh, when is the next guessing your rank? Or like, how can I submit into guessing your rank? I get a lot of questions like that. And I apologize if I've liked your uh, comment and haven't answered the question. The only reason I do that is because I've answered the question so many times before. And if I did it again, I just kind of start losing my mind. So <laughs> I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, I do see all the comments and they all are amazing and they do warm my heart, even the critical ones. For the third question they ask, what are some of your favorite interests? Well, I, I mentioned this earlier, I have an interest in pretty much everything that exists. I think life is very fascinating. The more open-minded you are, the better things are. And uh, it's, it's, it's been kind of interesting because I did just move and I've had to adapt a lot of my uh, lifestyle because my previous roommate um, and my current roommate are very, very different people. And uh, I've had to adapt a lot of my, I guess, habits, I should say. But it's, it's fine. I'm a pretty adaptable person. I don't mind it at all. And like my roommate has been teaching me a lot of things. Like my roommate is incredibly smart. Uh, she's been teaching me a lot of stuff and I, I love learning. Uh, even though I wasn't like the best student in school, I do love learning itself. It's just, I don't like the way the actual schools teach you because it's just not fun, but like actual genuine learning that has a passion behind it is a lot more fun to do, especially at your own pace and you don't have to be graded on things. It's just learning for fun because learning is fun. It's just that school makes it not fun because they make they make it a chore. But otherwise, I love uh, so many different things. I think gaming is just definitely one of my biggest hobbies, though. Um, I don't know what on earth I would do if I wasn't a gamer. I don't know how I'd stay uh, happy. <laughs> that sounds depressing, but like gaming is like insane. I, I'm not gonna go so deep into it, but gaming really has changed my life. Um, the stories that the games have told, the people that I've met through games, the experience that I've had through games, like it really has changed my life. And I think mostly for the better. And number four, do you think your commentary has been able to help a lot of people get better at IDV? Uh, I like to think so, but I'm not really sure. Cause the thing is, I do my commentary for fun. I think I've mentioned that quite a few times. I'm not, a good official commentator. I could not be an official commentator for IDV because I, I, first off, I'm not very good at the game. Um, there's still a lot of things I need to learn. And a lot of the things I say aren't even like objectively correct. A lot of things I say are just inferences, guessing what people are doing, especially with my tournament content or guessing your ranks. A lot of it is like, this is what I think you should have done, but I don't know a hundred percent sure. And I think a lot of people, I'm, I'm a little nervous that a lot of people like take those to heart and be like, okay, let me do exactly what Z said in this situation because he's a big content creator. I mean that he knows what he's talking about. I don't, I really don't know what I'm talking about. I just try to, I just try to think of like the best case scenario. I'm like, then maybe you should have done this instead. Right. You know, sometimes I'm wrong. And then maybe sometimes I'm right. You know, it's, you never really know. Um, I just, uh, like I said, I just make a lot of guesses and inferences about like just my experiences through playing the game or like watching other matches and whatnot. So yeah, I, I, I do hope my commentary has helped some people get better at the game. But uh, I think if you really want to get better at the game, you should watch a far more experienced player than I, watch some guides by more experienced players, watch tournaments, um, watch pro players. If you're trying to get better at IDV, do not come to me. I am not the person you want to watch if you want to get good at this game. If you want to just have a you know chill, relaxing time, have some fun, pick up a just start, watch some tournaments or some silly gameplay, this is the channel for you. If you're trying to improve at IDV and you want like guides and a lot of instructions, maybe not the channel for you. I, I do give out tips or advice of like things that I think are good just because I like trying to do that. I think it's just like nice to integrate some of that commentary in there when I feel like talking about it. 
but uh, it's not my only purpose and I don't feel like I'm necessarily good at it. Next we have some questions here from Cloverette. Uh, their first question is, do you deal with a lot of technical slash real life issues when it, make, uh, it comes to making content? If so, how are you able to deal with the frustration of multiple problems that seem to stack up uh, one after another? Okay, so this is a interesting question. I feel like a lot of content creators, especially the bigger they are, they have more issues. Um, first off, uh, the bigger you are, the more people know about you and the more people that know about you, the more hate you're going to get. Uh, that is the truth of it and you kind of just have to accept it. Uh, one of the biggest uh, lessons in life that you have to learn is that not everybody is going to like you, even if it's just for something super unfair. Like people, uh, I've seen comments people say, oh, they don't like me because I say Mike Gaming. Really? That's that's it. <laughs> people don't like me because I'm bad at the game. People don't like me because uh, they think I'm hypocritical because like I'll say a hunter is stupid and then I'll like turn around and be like, oh this. Or they say, oh you have such high double standards because you think this is hype but you think this is cringe. And it, a lot of it is more just like in the moment type stuff. Like when I get a flywheel and it's like, oh I got a clutch flywheel. I'm like, yeah that flywheel was awesome. But then if I'm a hunter, it's like, yo that flywheel was stupid. I hate flywheel, nerf flywheel. Like it's just in the moment. It doesn't mean what I actually think, right? It's just more like a in the moment kind of thing. Uh, but there's a lot of people, you know, that don't really like uh, me as a creator, and I guess that's fine. Uh, like a lot of their comments do hurt. But I'll, I'll, for every mean comment, there's like a hundred nice ones. So that's that's what you kind of have to remember uh, a lot. Um, one of the another issue is um, being responsible for other people. <laughs> this this one's uh this one's tough because as a content creator you're responsible for your audience and I don't think a lot of content creators know that I mean I, I I've uh, had some issues in the past not not so much with this channel but other like just in my other channels as well where there were other uh, like people or content creators that I had to keep in check that I really shouldn't have to like it it, it came to my responsibility um, despite it really should not have been something. Um, and I, I feel like one of the biggest things for a content creator that scares me is guilt by association. And I haven't really dealt with so much of this personally, but what I really am scared about is like collabing with other people and it turns out they're like a horrible person, uh, which is why I'm really scared about collabs, actually. I, I haven't really mentioned that. I'm, I'm terrified of collabs. Cause like the thing is, if I collab with somebody and I become their friend and we do like a lot of videos together, it's going to hurt so much, not only to lose a friendship with that person, uh, because of the things that like they have potentially have done, but it also like taints my channel, right? Because I don't want to delete the old videos that they would be in. It's a tough situation, I guess. I, I don't really know how to describe other really much than that. Um, but yeah, I think that one is definitely the biggest one is uh, people um, doing something like that. I also had an issue uh, a few weeks ago where people were trying to accuse me of being like racist or transphobic um, for a situation I had no knowledge of uh, in my Discord server. I, I've, I've even thought about deleting my Discord server several times because of situations where people expect me to be uh, responsible on behalf of something that somebody in my server said. And it's like, um, yeah, I mean, I can control them to a certain extent, but there's only so much that I can do, right? Uh, like, obviously you are responsible for your audience as a content creator, but at the same time, they are their own person. Just because I have control over my audience does not mean I have full control of whatever they do, right? You know, you can say, oh, I'm a fan of Z's, and then you can start spotting like a bunch of like racist comments. That doesn't make me a racist. It's just, that's that guilt by association kind of thing that I'm scared of. And a lot of people uh, tend to do that kind of thing, and it's really annoying. Um, so yeah, that's why I decided uh, to do those charity streams. Um, people were saying that, uh, oh, Z's is just doing these streams to defend my, or to defend himself. Uh, and yeah, I am. I mean, I, I want to get to a point where the streams are not just to defend myself because people, again, were accusing me of being racist or transphobic or anything. I'm not, by the way. I have no evidence that I can prove otherwise, but I'm not. That's all I can really say. It's hard to like prove that one is a racist or disprove that one is a racist because you can just say this guy's a racist and people will believe it or they won't. And like, there's no proof of me being a racist out there. It's just people saying it because reasons. And that's the kind of thing that I really hate is the people that want to bring others down. Uh, that, that stuff frustrates me, you know, and especially like when things are clearly just not true. Um, so yeah, when I came to those charity live streams, uh, when I was getting accused of all that stuff, I really just wanted to put an end to it and be like, you know what? Instead of just like being like these freaking people on the internet, just accusing me of like things that are not even true. Why don't I actually just try to make a difference instead and just be like, listen, if you want to call me this, that I listen, I've literally tried to support 
the things that you're accusing me of. So here's literal evidence that you can't say that anymore. So like, it, it's, it's, it's sad that like, this good thing is being born from darkness because it was born from a desire to defend myself. But I hope that in the future, it can be something that we can do often, like the, with the charity streams. I want to maybe make them like an annual thing, right? I've done some research for at least the LGBTQ one, and I maybe I'm going to be donating to the Trevor Project. And I, I think that seems like it has potential. And I thought, well, maybe we could do that like a yearly thing, right? Like maybe it came from an initial spot of me wanting to defend myself um, to prove to others that I do support uh, the communities or minorities or uh, with mental health for children and whatnot. I, I wanna support these things. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is by uh, creating these things, trying to get other creators uh, on board, um, donating my own money as well. I, I feel like that not only proves that I support these things uh, with like, you know, my actions and through my own money, but at the same time, it makes this server a better place because we can you all unite together for a good cause. And I really want that uh, to be a thing that we can all do together and even though again it's like the light born from the darkness kind of thing so it's like it was born from a desire to defend myself but it doesn't mean that i can have more than mo one motivation right because I, I think i saw a lot of comments of people saying oh he's just doing it to defend himself well it can be to defend myself but it can also be because of genuine desire to want to do it you know i've watched uh, markiplier and jacksepticeye growing up a lot and they did a lot of charity live streams i've always wanted to do a charity live stream it's just that now I'm just like, okay, you know what? If it defends myself and it makes good things happen, why don't I just do it? So yeah, maybe the incentive was born from a defending myself, but it's like, now that I can make things better, why don't I just like continue it so that my only motivation will one day be to actually make a real difference and not just be to defend myself, you know? That's what I want it to be in the end. But yeah, uh, that's a, a bit of a rant there. I apologize for that. Uh, but thank you, that was a very interesting question. And the next question was, I saw you mention in another video that you were dealing with imposter syndrome. Do you still feel the same way now? I used to make short form content for things not IDV related and I still find it difficult to get back to that consistency because I once had imposter syndrome. Do you have any tips to deal with this? Um, unfortunately, not really, because I still have insane imposter syndrome. I don't even feel like I'm a good IDV content creator. I don't. Like I said earlier, I still feel like I'm very new to all this, even though it's only been like a year. And just in general, I, I feel like I'm kind of a fraud when it comes to doing YouTube because I kind of just do whatever works. There's like a lot of creators out there that like know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. It feels like, and I really just feel like I'm kind of winging it. Um, <laughs> I just, I just do the things that I think are cool or whatever works for me. Um, I think what's most important when you're dealing with imposter syndrome is at least in a creative field is Think about the video that you're making and if you are happy and having fun with making it. If you are having fun making the video that you're making and it makes you smile or you think it makes other people smile or you just have any form of joy making the video that you're making, then that is a good starting point. And I think that's all I can really share because I have fun making my videos and even though I don't think that they're perfect, they have a lot of flaws, there's a lot of ways to improve. I have fun making them. And I know that there are some people out there that like watching it. So even if they aren't perfect, it's a starting point, right? You can always improve. And I, I encourage other people, other aspiring creators to do the exact same thing. If you're like, oh, I'm scared. I don't wanna just be copying this creator or doing this. You can have fun making the videos that you wanna make. It doesn't matter. As long as you are having fun with the content that you're trying to create, then I think it's fine. Especially like if you put your own personality or personal twist on it, that is what's going to show to your audience is your personality, what makes like what, what, what the video is, is like what your identity of it is. Obviously, if you're just like trying to completely rip off somebody else, then maybe not so much. But if you're at least putting a genuine effort to trying to make something that is yours, if it has your identity behind it and you are enjoying it and having fun with it, then go with it. Just do it. Just have fun with it and think about what it all means later. For now, just have fun. Next up, we have some questions from Radicus, friend of the channel. Uh, they say, you made Dragon last season. Does this mean you're going for champion this season or just gonna grind for Hydra? Uh, that's a good question. I actually haven't played rank too much uh, this season, mainly because uh, the initial start of it, I was busy with the move. And uh, I've been working on a lot of other projects to catch up with. So I, I feel like maybe this season, I'm not gonna grind rank as hard. 
Uh, maybe next season, I'm not really sure. It, it, maybe it really just depends on how I feel. Like right now, I'm trying to finish up a lot of the projects that I've been uh, putting off because of the move, because the move took up so much time. And I'm really just playing catch up right now. So it's, it's hard to say. I'll be playing rank here and there, but I don't know if I'm gonna grind super hard this season, but uh, we'll, we'll just have to see. I, I really can't say for sure or not. Uh, their second question is, which hunter would you like to see get a new carry animation? Uh, I feel like I'm biased here. I'm just gonna say Nightwatch. I would love it if uh, he hung people off his scythe. I think that'd be really cool. Just tied him to where his scythe is. Just, and then just puts it on his back and he just starts walking and dragging people along. I think that'd be really cool. I think another cool one would be like a Soul Weaver one where she like webs up your legs or something and like carries you along. I don't really know. I'm not really sure how she would do it. I think, I think it'd just be really cool for Soul Weaver to have one as well. Just like spider themed one that doesn't look like her webbing uh, one as well. I don't know. It could be really cool. Uh, next is, if you could rework an entire character's abilities, who and what would you change it to? Uh, good question. I think it would be Wax Artist, because I think Wax Artist is pretty cringe. Not the biggest fan of his gameplay, because it's just point and click, and it just feels really difficult to do anything against. I know you're just supposed to break line of sight and tight kite him, but, like, transitioning against that guy is a pain. Uh, I really don't like how the Wax mechanic works. It's, it's just really frustrating, because how fast it accumulates, how fast it charges. I know he's not the strongest one in the game, but I, I really wish that they would like rework uh, his presence abilities or like his his hot wax is just really, really stupid. I don't like going from full health to zero because I got 100 wax. Like that's just really stupid. How are you even supposed to rescue against that character, dude? Uh, it's, it's really annoying. I don't know, dude. I'm not really sure what I would even change it to. Just like, I feel like a rework would be nice. Make it so the wax doesn't accumulate as fast. Like just make, make it, you can even make wax stars faster. Like you just like give him like a speed something I, I, maybe not so much like that just to give, give him some other like ability that isn't just hot wax and spam because it's just it's just it's just annoying dude i don't really know how to describe it other than that it's just you, you find a wax stars and you just feel it you just know how annoying it is bro and their final question is how would you feel about echoes magically appearing to help with persona um i mean i would like it but i also don't like people gifting me too often because i don't want to take advantage of my audience so i feel like if i earn the echoes then it's fine but I will usually like having that for like when I reach a subscriber milestone or something, or if I do something that's really good in the game. Like I think Rad actually did gift me um, uh, something for when I got Dragon, which was really cool. Uh, but I want to earn uh, rewards if people want to like, you know, donate a skin. I don't want people to just give it to me willy nilly, right? It it's not fair, right? It's not fair, especially the people who really love the characters and whatnot, because I don't deserve it unless I earn it. So at the moment, I don't feel like I've earned it, so I would say no. But if I do something to earn it in the future, maybe for winter, then maybe I would I would appreciate any uh, donations. But let me let me earn it. Next question is from Mio Puff, and they ask, "Do you ever think of streaming on TikTok?" Also, um, I don't know. I've considered it. I've talked with Hikaru uh, about like maybe potentially doing dual streams on Twitch or like TikTok. But I I've been on IDV TikTok a little bit. It's um. It's scary. It's scary. There's a lot of mean-spirited people on there. Uh, it's... I don't know if I want to go on there. I really don't know. Um, it's uh, it's scary. I'll just I'll just say that. I, I'm really not sure. I feel like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be the biggest fan of it. I'm sure there's like tons and tons of really nice and silly people on there, but like... I've seen a lot of like the toxic stuff and it just kind of makes you want to stay away from it in general, honestly. Next question is from Identity Vibes and they ask, Duco collaboration when? Uh, that's a great, that's a great question. I would love to collab with Duco. I haven't done it yet because I feel like a lot of the time I've wanted to reach out to him, I've been busy and I feel like a lot of times I'm free. He's usually making an announcement of how busy he has to work. So I think a lot of it is just the scheduling, but uh, I would love to collab with Duco sometime in the future. And I know he already said like, I think in one of his Q and A's that he'd be down to for a collab as well. So yeah, I I'm definitely gonna hit him up sometime. It really is just like whenever our schedules match up. Next question is from Siruna Med, and they ask, are you interested in joining any IDV tournaments with your own team? If so, who do you want to be in your team, and would you be a hunter or survivor player? Love watching your commentary videos, so I think spectating you in a tourney would be really fun to see. Uh, that's a great question. The answer is... I don't know. <laughs> the idea of creating a team and competing for, like, Koa or something... It sounds really nice and it sounds really exciting, but the thing is the commitment is massive, 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 massive. Like there's a lot of things I want to do in life and I don't know if committing to IDV competitive is one of them. It sounds really fun, but um, I almost feel like I might be too old for it. <laughs> that that could be a thing. I just don't feel like, uh, 
uh, I'm in like the right age range to do it. Cause I feel like I'm older than average than a lot of people uh, on the server. So I feel like I'm a bit too old to do it now. And even then I don't play on mobile. Uh, I'm trash on mobile. You think I'm bad on, on PC? I'm even worse on mobile. I'm I'm worse than a worker bee, bro. I cut into a wall. I, I literally walk into walls, bro. If you want, if you see me play Hunter on mobile, you'll be like, what is this guy doing? Like this, this actually just looks like he just picked up IDV for the first time. I'm that bad on mobile, bro. I am trash. You think I can play in a tournament on mobile? Heck no, dude. Heck no. Oh boy. However, I'm not going to rule it out. I, I won't. But I would say the likelihood is pretty low because uh, I'm bad uh, and uh, for me to actually do it, it would take so much commitment and it's it's likely not going to happen, but I won't completely rule it out. And I'd be lying if I said the desire isn't there. Next up, we have some questions from Monocurb. They ask, I was wondering how you find the time to upload this much IDV content without burning out. Your videos are well edited and I know you have other channels, so how do you do that? Uh, well, it's a lot of just time management. Um, I feel like the last few days I've basically only been like grinding out videos, but it's just a lot of scheduling and like finding the time to do things. Uh, and that's a big part of it. I do work uh, long hours every day, um, but it's all just about like finding like the work-life balance, which uh, I'm pretty bad at. I mean, I do work a lot of hours, but I'm having fun during those hours and I take care of myself. Uh, and my hygiene and like, I make sure I eat and drink and all that good stuff. So like I'm taking care of myself um, and I still do all the things that I need to do in my personal life as well, whether that be like uh, taking care of like taxes and whatnot, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, when it comes to like, at least not burning out, uh, this is gonna sound kind of like dark, but death is kind of like a motivator, right? Cause you only get one life, right? So why would I waste a day relaxing when I could be working, you know? Cause like when you're a YouTuber, at least when you're like super into being a YouTuber, you'll realize it cause all you think about is YouTube. It's on your mind 24 seven. Now that is not something that people can deal with. Not everybody can do that. Um, but I am somebody who likes that. I'm always thinking up new ideas for YouTube and it's fun. That's the thing cause I have fun with YouTube. If you have fun with YouTube, it's exciting and uh, you like the grind and you appreciate it and it's it's great. Um, obviously, I think one day I will be stepping down from it, but not for a while. Like I, I my plan is to retire from YouTube uh, like full time uh, when I'm like 40. So that's that's not for a long time. <laughs> but no, uh, when, it, when I say like death is a motivator, it's more just because of like, yeah, why why waste a day? Why why put off tomorrow what can be done today? That kind of thing, right? I mean, I do get demotivated some days, especially when I like I uh, see like some hate comments. Those are huge demotivators, actually. Um, whenever people are like, "Oh, this guy sucks. He should stop playing the game. You should." Uh, he makes trash videos. They're low quality videos, and it's just, it's just like low 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 effort content, and it or like especially when um. Uh, when I'm when I'm really busy and like doing my own gameplay can be a lot harder because I have to do like wait times and whatnot. Wait wait times do take up a lot of time, but sometimes it's easier for me to like spectate the pros or like watch tournament matches because I know I can just like do it immediately, right? I don't have to do like wait times. I don't have to like actually perform because there are some matches as well when I play as Survivor. Let's say I want to play as a new skin for Survivor, um, I'll just decode. Like when I was playing with that antiquarian skin, I cut out like. 50% of the matches because most of it was just decoding. Nobody wants to see a match of just decoding, right? So you have to end up recording twice as many matches that you as you really want to, which means it takes twice as long to record. So stuff like that can be uh, pretty frustrating. And especially when you perform badly in a match, it's not really good entertainment, right? Like let's say you have like a 10 second kite and it's like, well, great. You only have 10 seconds of content. So it, it feels bad because then it's like, you didn't you don't have the content that you want and you perform badly and then that just snowballs into the next match and then all you think about is the comments that are gonna be like oh man this guy sucks so that that kind of that feels bad right that feels bad but you know uh if you have fun with the game that's that's what really does it i do have fun with the game and uh i want to do a lot with my life so whenever i think about like taking a break at least for me obviously i know taking a break is really important i did rest up uh, a little bit today i took a nap when i uh needed it but i think at least for me personally I love the grind and I don't want to rest a lot of the time because I just, I want to do as much with my life as possible before I die. And um, if it's just making more videos every single day, getting a little extra money along the way doesn't hurt as well. And I get to make people entertain with my videos. I get to have fun making my videos, stuff like that. It's I, I have a good time with it. Like if I'm having fun with it, 
people are having fun with my videos and I want to do as much of my life as possible, those three things coincide to not letting to burnout. And again, it's different for everybody else, but for me at least, that's what keeps my flame reignited because I have fun with uh, doing it and I want to keep doing more with my life. So that just keeps the flame ignited, I guess I should say. Uh, I don't really experience burnout too often. Uh, a lot of creators talk about burnout on this platform. I have never really got burned out because I think I got burned out one time in like the almost six years been, I've been doing YouTube. I've been burned out like one time and that was like four years ago. So <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Uh, their second question is, will Priestess ever be nerfed? And all I can say is, um, yeah, we're, we're considering it. We're considering it. Yeah, we are considering it. <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, I think that is going to be it. Uh, for today, everybody. I'm not sure if I'll do a part two to this uh, q and I know I said last q and I might do a part two. I'm not sure if I will for this one. It depends on how many more questions I'll get and if there's a lot of ones that I want to answer. I'm sorry if I did get to all the questions. I did read most of them. Uh, so I, I apologize again. Thank you for submitting all your questions, everybody. Uh, again, apologize to the ones that I couldn't get to. I really do hope that um, I answered a lot of the uh, more ones I could go into depth towards. But maybe if you guys really want to see like a part two, definitely let me know down in the comments. Um, if I see like a lot of support for it, maybe I will make the part two uh, for more uh, questions and whatnot. Just let me know. Uh, just give me that feedback and I'll uh, I'll be sure to respond in turn. But yeah, that's going to be it for me, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.